In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how to configure the Corel Painter Essentials preferences, and we'll also take a look at customizing Corel Painter Essentials. Starting with the preferences, we can find those in the Edit menu under Preferences. We'll start with General. Earlier, we looked at Align Constrain Brush Strokes to Canvas, so we'll skip over that. Show Commit dialog box when converting to a layer refers to when we create a special layer type. So for example, if I create a type layer here, you can see that this is a special text layer. So now if I select a blender brush, such as Directional Diffuser, and I go to paint on this text layer, I'm gonna get a warning message that says commit to an image layer. And if we click on commit, then I'll be able to blend that text. I'm gonna undo a couple of times to put that back to a regular text layer. Then I'll go to Edit Preferences General, and I'll uncheck Show Commit Dialog Box. Now if I go to Paint, I can just paint without it giving me that warning message. It's up to you if you want to leave that on or turn it off. Until you get comfortable using Curl Painter, you may want to just leave it on. The next option is Create Backup on Save. This is good to leave enabled because it will create a backup every time you save. What this does is this saves a copy of your artwork as the previous version before you saved. So then that way, if something happens to your most recent save, you have that older version. The backup files are saved along with your original, and they're designated as underscore back. The next option is show icon when painting. If I click on OK, I select the smooth pen, and I paint a stroke, you can see that that cursor disappears, and I see this little crosshair icon, which works fine if I'm using a really thin pen that's about the diameter of the crosshair. But if I use a bigger brush, then I'm missing some of that feedback I could get from my cursor. In my opinion, it's better to go to Edit Preferences General and uncheck Show Icon When Painting. Now when you paint, you're going to see a cursor that represents your maximum brush size. This can be useful because if you're using something like a blender, you may want to blend with the edge of your brush, or you may want to blend with the center of your brush. Or if you're doing airbrushing, it may be helpful to see the diameter of the brush just to be able to see what you're doing a lot better. So this is my preferred setting for the brush cursor. Let's go back to the preferences. Next is brush size increment. By default, that's set to one pixel. So if I switch back to the smooth pen, and then I look up here where it says size, I can press the right bracket key to make my brush incrementally larger by one pixel at a time, or I can make it incrementally smaller by one pixel at a time. I could even hold that down. So as you can see, I can really fine tune my brush. If I want it to move in larger increments than one pixel, then I can go to Edit Preferences General, and I can change that here. I could have it move in 10 pixel increments. So now if I hit right bracket, it's going 15, 25, 35, 45, and so on. I prefer to size my brush visually using the keyboard shortcut of holding Control and Alt and dragging my pen. So I go ahead and just leave this at its default of one pixel. And then the last setting is notify me of available product updates. This is good to leave enabled because a product update can fix bugs and add new features. Let's go to the next tab, which is interface. Here we can change our workspace units from pixels to inches or other units. We can also change the background color, which is the color outside of your canvas. If you don't like this gray color, you can change it to whatever you like. But I recommend choosing a neutral color that isn't too light or too dark just so it doesn't augment your perception of color while you're painting. Just for fun, let's go ahead and set it to a color like this bright color. Click on OK. And now we have an obnoxious salmon color for the background. If we want to set that back, we'll go to Edit Preferences, Interface, and we'll set this back to 96. We can choose our default view mode. Earlier, we looked at the different view modes where we can view a single document or multiple documents. By default, I leave this at single document view, but you can set this to whatever you like. And then we can show our classic auto painting presets. We'll talk about auto painting in a later lesson. Next is performance. I don't wanna to spend too much time here because I have a reference video you can watch that'll teach you how to set this up. But basically this optimizes your computer hardware for Corel Painter. I like to have my undo levels at nine. And if you want, you can just follow all the tips here. There's also view options. Smooth objects when zooming is nice. This will smooth out the image on your screen at the expense of not looking 100% accurate. But if you're concerned how this will look when you print, you can uncheck this. And that'll just make the image look a little bit crisper. If I zoom in here, you'll see what I mean. 
We can also increase drawing speed when zoomed out. I recommend doing this because if you're painting with big brushes while you're zooming out, it'll just make the brush performance faster. And you must restart Painter Essentials for the performance settings to take effect for everything except for the view options and the undo levels. The next tab is for tablet. If you're using a Wacom tablet, you'll want to choose WinTab. If you're using a non-Wacom tablet like a Huion or a UG or XP Pen, those also use WinTab. If you're using a Microsoft Surface Pro, then you'll want to choose Real-Time Stylus. You'll need to restart Painter to apply these changes. There's also multi-touch options if your device supports multi-touch. We looked at this earlier. You can enable and disable it here. And you can choose from three different options. For me, Wacom and Windows Touch Devices works the best, but you could try these different options to see if that gets touch working better. And that's it for the preferences. I'll click on OK. Let's take a look at some more ways we can customize Corel Painter. I'll go to Edit Preferences Brush Tracking. And brush tracking is similar to how we set the tip feel in the Wacom Tablet Properties. This is applied in addition to the setting you choose in the Wacom Tablet Properties. So if your pen pressure is working fine, you don't actually need to use this. But it can be useful for further fine-tuning your pen pressure here in Corel Painter. You can also apply this globally or per brush variant. So if there's a particular brush that's not responding well to pen pressure, or you want to customize the feel of a brush, then you can set brush tracking just for that brush. I'm going to apply this just to the current brush variant, and you could set all of these different sliders to create a pen pressure profile, or you can just draw on the scratch pad. Now for this brush, I want it to go from thick to thin really easily. So I'm going to make sure that I press down from thick to thin and I give it a nice transition. And that gives me a linear profile. It sets all of these sliders for me. If I press down hard and I don't press down light at all, it gives me a profile like this. If I press down lightly, then I get a profile like this. And if I do something in between, I get something like that. So I want to draw a nice tapered stroke, and I'll get a nice curve like this. I'll set the green for this brush to zero. And now when I draw with this brush, it responds really nicely to pen pressure, and I can get a really sharp taper. I'm going to select a different brush called Blunt Chalk, found in the Chalk Pastel and Crayons category. I'll draw a test stroke with this brush, and you can see that I can utilize the paper grain. Firmer pressure covers the grain more, lighter pressure covers it less. But it feels a little bit hard to control the pen pressure and get what I want. So I'm going to set brush tracking for this brush. Now rather than doing something like this that tapers, I'm actually just going to press really hard. Now when I paint, it feels much easier to get that lighter pen pressure, and I feel like I have more control. Next, the next topic I want to discuss are layouts. We looked at this earlier, but part of what you can do to customize Corel Painter is save custom layouts. Unfortunately, unfortunately in Corel Painter Essentials, there's no way to export your workspace or your layout. So if you were so if you were to uninstall and reinstall Painter Essentials, you're going to lose your customization. What I would recommend doing is doing a screen capture, always have, and then that way you can always see visually how you had it arranged and just rebuild it. I'm going to close Corel Painter Essentials, and then I'm going to locate the icon for Corel Painter Essentials. I'll hold down Shift, and I'll double click on it. I'll continue to hold Shift until I get this message here. And when I, and when I enter this mode, I have the option to restore Corel Painter Essentials to its factory default. So if you happen to mess something up in Corel Painter Essentials and you want to get everything back to normal, you can restore all settings to factory defaults just to reset everything, or you can keep your brush customization. Other, other customizations such as palette arrangements will be lost. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll reset. You can, you can see the locations of my palettes have been reset. But if I draw with this pen, you can see that it's still custom. <clears throat> so those brush settings have been retained. This is really the closest you can get to customizing a brush in Corella Painter Essentials. In the full version of Corella Painter, you can customize brushes and save your own custom. You can also create your own custom brush categories, and you can have custom palettes of brushes with custom icons. That's it for the coming up. Coming up next, we'll take a look at all the different brush categories, and I'll show you the techniques for working with each type of brush.